Damn. Fascinating. Heart rate. Definitely fascinating. So, Jerron's board. Good board? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it looks beautiful. Okay. It looks it's beautiful. It just board. looks like okay. an average popsicle. Yeah. Now, if we look at your wheels, look at how your, your wheels to the edge, you got probably a half an inch from there. So, this board has a little easier tip this way than Chris's. Flips. For flipping, right? For flipping, right. Right. Because right. I still the, flip my board, Chris. <laughs> 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 it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, it's all right, Chris. He's, he's going to be flipping his board quite well, a bit. This is here. the thing I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll ask Kelly to leave in a little bit because we're doing Battle of the Barracks and I need some insider information <laughs> on there flipping the board. There we go. There you go. But we'll get to that. You should we'll come watch that. the game give you, he can coach you. Will you be my coach? <laughs> I need like, a quiver. Trucks. No, I need like a caddy, right? I'll come over and be like, I'm going to do a a switch backside flip. You're going to be like, this is a board you need for the <laughs> Dude. Please do that. That would be amazing. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I'm just saying. Well, I still so, want to go meet you over at the courthouse. You get up on the stage, right? Oh my Are god! Are we going to work on that? Paul. <laughs> I'm not getting up on that thing. You got it. Dude. No, no, no. The stage will be torn down by the time no, you get there. No, yeah, no. that's fine. Um, so, works so, good. So, so let's talk about yeah, something please, else about please, trucks. Please, please, so, please. So, uh, boards, right? Okay. Yeah. So, so truck wise, on here, you're. Running Royals, okay, mm -hmm. and Royals in general are like a, a venture or a thunder, and the axles lean out. Mm -hmm. So in general, um, shorter wheelbases are better there, okay. Mm -hmm. But but if you put Indies on this same board, the shorter wheelbase, the wheelbase is going to be tighter axle to axle. Yeah, so we sell a skateboard good. based on the truck holes, but the math that happens is really axle to axle, right? Mm. So when you go buy a Ford truck, it's Ford made the whole thing and they advertise what the wheelbase is, right? You know, but the skate shop, your wheelbase is this because mm -hmm. you don't know what trucks you're going to buy or mm -hmm. you're only changing one thing. I, I ride 52s and I ride Thunder 147s. That's what I ride, you know, what, whatever your choice is, right? right? So the board's the only thing that's changing and then the board gets all the blame for it. Never. Yeah. No, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, so like I've got a lot of people that I make 13 and three quarter inch wheelbase boards for that ride. Thunders. Mm, interesting. Okay. Or I'll have someone say, hey, I stepped on so-and-so's board. And wow, that was a bit. Well, they're riding Indies. You're riding Thunders. You're in the same mold right now. So let me go put that math in there, right? How much does that change between, like, say, a Thunder and an Indy? What around, are we? Around half an inch. Oh, that wow. much? Wow. Yeah, a huge. half yeah. an inch. That's crazy. So if you have a 14. And it, and it changes based on how much you tighten your bushings, how squashed they are, right? Because okay. as you squash yeah. your bushings, the in. truck turns in. Yeah. If, if they're really loose, oh, right. it stands out, yeah. right? So there's such a variable there. And then the reality is that the trucks are always selling the next marketing thing, right? And and then in the world of manufacturing, maybe the factory changed or moved to another continent or whatever happened, right? So you don't have that consistency that you thought you had, mm -hmm. but your brain still thinks you got it because right. that's your perception, right? right? A half an inch. So if you have a 14 inch wheelbase and you put independence on there, you're going to have a 13 and a half wheelbase, no, inch no, wheelbase, or no, a 13 and a... It's a comparative thing, okay? If you put... Th this board has royals on it right now. Yeah. And let's say that leans out like a thunder. Right? Okay, Venture. gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so that leans out. Uh -huh. So right now this angle is touching here, right? Right. right. But if I put an indie on the same board, right. the axle's going to be here and the tail's going to hit sooner and the number's going to be lower. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Right. So you get more leverage with those than you do with the indie? Well, it's interesting because it, there's, there's the leverage when you're manualing and that flick right mm -hmm. and then there's a the leverage of when you connect uh -huh. okay so the connect is sort of this part right right, right. at the right place yeah. but the leverage to get there is this piece mm -hmm. yeah right interesting so so where the holes are so i could take this board for instance right now if i had this uncut out and i was just in my shop making a board i could just make two boards one for thunders one for ventures or royals or whatever it is and then go go out and ride them right so Indy, Indy's churn tight, that's known, right? But it's because they make the wheelbase smaller. However, Thunders and Ventures went the direction they went in the 90s because that wasn't where skateboarding wanted to go. It wanted to not churn. It wanted to be stable. So it went bigger wheelbase. So a lot of the boards in the 90s, as much as 14 was the norm, there were a lot of 14 and a halfs as well. Hmm. Okay, let me ask you, your little uh, angle yep. angle uh, device, what, what's that called? I mean, this this is a... 
a Wilsey digital angle gauge. Okay, an angle gauge. So so it's got a magnetic bottom to it, but it doesn't quite fit across the truck hole. Oh, okay. So I put ma I glued magnets onto it. Oh, but it's really a digital digital gauge angle gauge for my table saw. Oh. So you have a table saw blade. You put it on. You put the, put it on the table and you zero yeah. it out. Yeah. You put it on the blade. Crank crank crank. Perfect ninety. Okay. Yeah. Now my cut will be square. Where if it's eighty nine, uh -huh. your part's not going to be square, right? Or maybe you're looking for eighty three because. You're making a segmented bowl, and you got to get sure. all those pieces to match up. So, what is what's the main thing that you're looking? Like, if somebody went out and bought that an angle gauge, what's the main thing that they're comparative. looking for? Comparative, it's, it's just comparative from the nose and the tail to when the it the nose and tail your setup versus somebody else's setup. You could also get a digital angle gauge at Home Depot that looks like a little level. Uh -huh. It's a built-in level, okay, and you could use that and just hold it on your board, mm. you know. And then when you're as a, you're a carpenter already, so you can use it in your job too, right? right there you right. go, there you, you go. Know? And I can use this on my table saw. Yeah, get back to the shop. Okay, right. I'm just I was just you know? curious about the uh, what the. So it's more about comparative because again, I don't believe there's a right or wrong. Right. right, there's just a comparative. There can be an ugly. You know, <laughs> that's true. From that context, that's true. That's you know, true. For to me, a board that's pointy in the front. And wide in the back to me, and part of my, it's growing up, my board should always be, nose should be longer in the front, should be a little wider in the front, less in the back. That's just my, I feel that's what looks right, mm -hmm. but some people like it perfectly the same on each end. But then you take a cruiser and it's like, oh, it's got no nose and it's pointed, and but it, what's right. its purpose? It's right. a cruiser. Cruise. Right. Well, right. I want to ask some. When it comes to the trucks, is there, because you said the axles go different directions on some of them, like Indies go yep. inward, you said? Oh, or no, the, the axle where the axle, the axle sits. Oh, okay. So it's, so, so it's the actual between, like, relation the yeah, okay. between the bolt hole and where the axle is. Is there... So if I look at this, it's really close. Has anybody got a board of indies on it? No, but I, I skate for indies. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have <laughs> but a board of But I was wondering, what's the... If you were... I guess it depends on the board, the shape of the board, but what's like the best for like flip tricks? Again, I don't believe there's a right or wrong. It's, it's all what, personal what, stuff. What, what, no, what, totally. Where your body's at. Where but, your body's at. But like, okay. Because, because I was, as I talk about that punch, right? Your body's at the length of your legs, your weight, your mass. I was asking that because of where you say the wheels sit on the board to the edge. Yep. It, that that makes a big difference for how your board flips. I didn't know if that had anything to do with the certain trucks too. About but the, it's also like the, the, it's just a, the, the shape the of, the of the board truck. too. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's everything, right? It's, it's almost like you get to the, your perfect board and then make those minor adjustments. Right. But like you said, like indies turn better because they're the wheelbase is right. somewhat but if, smaller. But if I take some thunders and make the axle be in the same place, I'm not saying the indie still won't turn tighter because of the geometry of the truck, yeah. right? But the framing of where it is is the framing of where it is, right? Yeah. Like we're near the Pacific Ocean here. We're nowhere near the Mississippi, right? We're framed by that. Yeah. So it's that kind of context where you just, you know. But you could take a pair it. of thunders, put some like wedge um, – Riser pads under there, and force and get them to lean oh. in a little bit, and then all of a sudden yeah. they could turn like thunder. I mean, turn like indies. Yeah, totally. Okay. I, uh, Sometimes I question Roger's philosophy. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> no, years, years ago, I think he knows. Nah, wedge he pads knows were very shit. common in the seventies, especially sure. with the slalom I never guys. Heard of that? They tune they tune the way their truck turns, so they detune the back truck and make the truck turn front truck more that's aggressive. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a riser pad right. that's on angles. Right. Oh wow. wow. So you got longer bolts on one end and shorter on the other. Yes. And that that then takes that. And tilts it like Which this. Which in turn, like you could just that, turn it right? to whichever way you want. So right? so years ago, I did this thing with Danny Way and Rob Dyrdek for Danny Way doing a speed challenge mm -hmm. and getting towed by Rob in his little car and a Guinness thing. And um, I made special baseball. And he's, he's like, I'm not riding none of those goofy trucks. I got to be Indies. I'm not riding those reverse kingpin, more stable uh -huh. things. I'm, I got to ride Indies. Okay. So I made a set of base plates. I had my machinist, in-house machinist at that time, make a set of Indie base plates out of a billet of aluminum that took and put the wedge built into it. So we detuned the indies so that they were more stable. He's mm -hmm. skating an indie hanger with a special base, special plate. base plate. Now, why not make the, 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 the riser pad that we were just talking about? In, in this case, that's just what we decided to do at that time. So, so, so you were basically... So, and Danny was like, just like I'm not riding goofy trucks, I'm not riding riser pads, right? Oh, okay. okay, like okay. That kind of, so like, you're basically taking the, the indie zone, you're pushing the axle out towards the nose and tail, towards the tips of it, right. rather than inward. Right. So that way it gives you more stability. More stability. Because yeah. I'm thinking to myself, like, you can actually 
CNC a bunch of different angle riser pads to get that exact movement that right. he wants. Right, but he didn't want riser pads. Right, which made it harder for you? Well, I made it happen. How many tries did it take to get the, the truck the way that, did it take? We just a, made it. <laughs> but what it I'm saying worked, though is like, first try yeah, out. but that's what I'm saying though. Did he, did he have to test it and be like, oh no, I need a little bit more. Danny looked at it. It looked like what he wanted it to look like. Okay. So therefore his mind felt good about it. Okay. We made two different variants of a board. One I literally put, it was still flexy when he got up to like 50 or something. I put carbon fiber on it and stiffened it up a little bit more. And then he went 73 or something. I can't remember what it was. Yeah. Standing up? He yeah. wasn't losing? No, but he was getting towed on a runway out oh, in the desert. Psycho. Yeah. But it was like, it was only a mile to make it happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the runway was pretty pretty rough i mean it was recently new but it's a runway yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. right right it's right. not a basketball court goodness what other trucks are shaped like indy is there any other ones well lots of people have imitated an indy so you can't say there's not yeah mm -hmm. and um just like in the world of of downhill trucks there's people have put so much money into cnc engineering downhill trucks or longboard trucks you know it's crazy you know that i i get blown away what they do, but it's also an enthusiast doing what they do, right? Yeah. Like the reality is if you have those tools, you have that knowledge and you have that access, right? Yeah. Why not? You know? mm -hmm. I did what I did my whole life because of the access I had in between what my mind exactly. is willing to do right. to face that challenge, right? And I've want, been And you want to make a better product. Yeah. 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 I've been seeing Ace recently. And like, yeah. where does that fit into what the... So the Aces are based on original indie geometry, like indie one or three or something and they're actually another eighth inch shorter than an indie oh wow Real base axle to axle yeah but ace has been doing some neat things with with different nuts and axles and mm -hmm. you know they're 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 trying to to change it up you know yeah. and i really applaud the willingness to try whether it sticks if nobody copies it then i guess it's no good mm. somebody copies it it does i mean right? that's the uh biggest compliment right right you know it's like this the kingpins on here are great right like from that context of grinding, you know, mm -hmm. as long as they're they're engineered to be stable and the kingpins don't wobble, they look pretty good. Yeah. That's the hardest thing with this kind of kingpin of is it's going in the base plate and it's just leverage, right? Oh, you have yeah. all Bushies. this leverage out there to make that bolt want to move. Do they ever get wobbly or? Uh, no, they no. don't. That's great. Mm -mm. So part of that is just good engineering, good tolerances. Yeah. You know, Jerron hasn't ridden that, that board in months. Yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> been a while. Yeah. I trip out on As my puts it down. I put a trip out on my board. My board squeaks a ton. Yeah, and it's always like I'll go to other people's board and it doesn't do that. A mine always squeaky. What bushings do you use? The medium bones. That's what I ride, and mm -hmm. they'll squeak till they work in, and then they don't squeak anymore. For me, personally. yeah, yeah, but also like the, the bones bushings might not be the exact um, size of the stock bushings that you that ride. Too. Yeah, so, so they, you might actually like be tilting your truck a little bit. So, so what I do with my bones bushings is on the very top where the nut is, I don't use a washer. Hmm? Oh, I put okay. a washer underneath the very bottom raise it up. and lift it up because otherwise it, it gets clamped down. Yeah, yeah. wait a minute, and you then, don't you don't put that washer on there. Nope. You want your bottom bushing to be the same size as the stock bushing that comes with almost. Well, it's all about fluidity. Fluidity yeah. in bushings is really interesting. I used to make bushings in the 80s, mm -hmm. and it's a very challenging thing, the balance of it. I, I, if you change the, the size of the bushing, whatever, it's going to change the geometry of the entire truck, whatever, because it's going right. to sit different. Yeah. For good or bad. So if it's sitting downward, it's going to pinch a little, and it's going to make that squeaking noise. So, so look at this. See how the yoke of the truck is not parallel to the base plate? Mm -hmm. You should put a washer underneath the bottom. So, so look at this. You can see the angle of, of the bushing sitting on it and the angle of the truck. So this truck is is squeezed down right now. Interesting. Mm -hmm. right, and right, if you right, put right, a washer right. underneath here, it will lift it up. Yep. Right. Oh. Under the bottom. Okay. The bottom. Right. right. And, and wheel bite will a little bit less because mm -hmm. now the wheel's a little bit higher right. from the surface of the board. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the angle is also making it swing a little differently. So instead of hitting here, it's going to hit there. Right. And also you slightly know? change your wheelbase. And slightly change your wheelbase. I do see a little wheel bite there, Dubs. <laughs> I got a couple of little, little yeah, rides on there. there. A little wheel bite. Uh, so, so out of curious, let me look at your trucks. Please do. No, so yeah, so much. yours still as well. Part part of it is I didn't design the truck, so I'm, I can't say how they designed it, right? Got you. But in my mind, when that's parallel, the bushing has uniform pressure on it. Right. So I'm a big believer in balance. 
So this is out of balance. God damn it. Right? But, but that's stock pushing something, right? Right. Stock. Stock. But but being out of balance, it's also under pressure. How can I get them because back in that. balance? Because this, this is my problem. Loosen your trucks. They're pretty loose and they squeak. Yeah. <laughs> but I... So, so try just putting one more washer in it. Just see how it goes. One more washer. Because it, this is the thing, Paul. But then you might go, it's too tight now. No, right? no, no, because I have problems with my bushings blowing out all the time. Okay. You stock bushings? Yeah. I, stock, bones, whatever it is, they, they blow out like after like a month or so. So what you're saying, oh. put another washer under... A flat washer, flat underneath, washer. That washer. underneath okay. this yeah. washer. Wow. Yeah. And that little washer can have a, a huge impact. A huge effect. Wow. That, now, that now type part, of shit blows my mind. Part yeah. of the problem, though, is that now can you get your nut on all the way? Oh, yeah. I'll get my nut on. Oh, I'll, get, <laughs> I'll get my nut on, Paul. Sugar and uh, on off. Me, trust, I'll get my nut on. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, we're talking about the schematics of my skateboard. Now. I know, it's funny. <laughs> but it, that's the stuff that trips me out, Paul, is that little washer can have that big of an effect on my board. So just think about this. So like when we look at technology, the start of technology being society knowing it was really man going to the moon, right? Yeah. Okay. They couldn't miss going to the moon by 0. 0.00000078. They, they had to be gone, spot on. Right? Right, right. That the, the, the technology that they had and the, the focus on that, you know? And um, things are made under passion for a product, right? And I'm not saying it doesn't work good, but what principle did you build it under? And did you build it under on purpose of that principle or not on purpose, right? Right. Because what happens is if the bushing is pinched like that, it is under load. And being under load, it's going to push back when you flex it. And you want a bushing to give and give back. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Just like your board, you want it to flex a little bit and you want it to give back. It's all fascinating, man. I really love... Is this skateboard talk um i'm gonna go put a washer under there and see how it goes <laughs> yeah, like for real go. because i do my, my bushings blow out i don't know why dude that's and that's the shittiest feeling for some reason it's the worst because yeah. then it i ride in a symmetrical board which you know whatever paul says but <laughs> i think it's symmetrical it's close it changed it's yeah it's damn close only it, paul it, knows no it's damn close oh, yeah. only paul knows but uh that that little, I mean, then it throws my whole board off because the bushing blew, and so now the trucks right. are unstable. Yeah, and so now my board's turning whichever way. Uh -huh. So I always try to like, I'll unscrew it a little bit and turn my blown bushing towards the back, the, okay, the, the where it's blown, and then tighten it back down so that I I can get at least get a little bit of non Can get some new bushings? Yeah, yeah, just yeah. get some new bushings. Where the hell are where, uh, bushings are hard to come by. I actually hit up Jared hit up for Jim. some mediums and he said they're all out. I, I don't like But yeah. see, I used to ride I don't know. I'm confused. Yeah. I just can, Dude, when I skate flat ground and my bushing blown is the worst feeling the, like pop. Bushings is such it, an it important is. part. It's, just, it's but, gross. But that's like when you're skating flat ground, it's like freestyle. You're at this really finite finite control, right? Yeah. You know, you're at that place, you know, where one degree this way makes the difference or not. You totally. Know? The board I have now, like the uh, bushings, everything is like literally perfect. So I'm like really happy, but I know in about a week, it's going to be. It's so. It's going to ch change. It changes so you know? much. Also, your wheels are changing because you're skating <laughs> board more. And yeah. Everything's changing. Yeah. 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 Your pop's changing because you're sliding your But like more. you always want to set your board up so it's like that perfect feeling, right? And it's always hard to get to that perfect feeling. And that's why like, it's so individual weird. because yeah. the perfect board for you may be this shit board for me. Totally. Right? right? I can get on your board and be like, this thing. I got yeah. on Kelly's board the other day. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> but for him. <laughs> It's the most perfect thing right. ever. Yeah, or, sure. or what did it teach you? There was something I liked. This worked, that didn't work. Right. Why, did, why did that work and why I, didn't this work? I had a, men, uh, I guess, a board madness a while back. And I think I've talked about it a few times in the show. But Shane O'Neill told me something. He's like, oh, dude, get 147 highs. I was writing Venture Lows. And I don't know if it was that that did it, but like maybe it was just Shane O'Neill telling me <laughs> yeah. what to ride. And then when I did that, my skating went up. Like, But the reality is that now riding the high truck, it takes longer for your tail to hit. Mm -hmm. I don't know what geometry differences the truck could have, but in the idea of being higher, mm -hmm. it's taking longer for the tail you hit. And now your punch is in the right place, where before your punch is right here. Exactly, yeah. Right? It's that difference. Now, you could have done it with an eighth-inch riser pad, maybe. Yeah. Or you could have rode bigger wheels. Or you could have rode bigger wheels. Yeah. yeah. 
I think the 147 high is the way to go for me personally. <laughs> Listen, right, if you yeah. discover it's like the something, medium truck, you know, I got like then I got all psycho about it, and then like the board I was skating, I was trying to call Jamie Thomas to see if he could send me this one shape, and then I just felt like I lost my mind. So yeah. I tried not to go down that route anymore. <laughs> well, I see okay. when people come to Jamie me, their Thomas. their initial perception <laughs> is usually right. It's the, your gut the, feeling. The, the gut feeling is usually right. The path to get there is the part that always blows them away. Yeah. Right? You know, but their gut feeling was right. Always yeah. go with your gut. But but knowing how to get there is we're, a we're, we're right? getting there. It's trial and error. We're getting there. Right. It is. So I luckily guess. in my workshop, because the truck and the wheel aren't changing, I can change it in the board, right? I can right. change it in the mold, mm -hmm. the tail length, the fingers are flat. Yep. You know, I got the tools and variables to do that. And then if we build a template, it's systemized and we just build the same thing over and over. It's an interesting drone. It is very interesting. <laughs> uh, Where is that like button? Right? Is it right here or right here? Just a little scroll um, coming down the bottom. It's it's subscribe over to yeah. It's on your it's on my left. Right? It's no, on, my left. on your left. Hey, yeah, hit right that there. button right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah, <laughs> the, the like button's kind of like in the in the right middle there. there. It's like we're kind of. Right oh, it's there. like right here. Kind of. Like yeah, right there. I mean, the subscribes like over to the left. <laughs> it's like right over there. Yeah. All right.